mention for uh, just before the Christmas break, we're really excited to have you. My name is Dr. Cam McDonald. Um, super excited to be on the call today uh, to be talking you through some of the health type priorities, why they make a difference. And also we're going to touch on how you can actually make the most of this information over your time uh, when you're at Christmas, because the last thing that you want to be doing at Christmas time is trying to get healthy. It can sometimes be the best time for you to um, understand what unhealthy food does to your body. It can really give you a good idea of that, but also uh, it's a time if you can learn some simple tips and tricks that work over this period of time, then it becomes a lot easier to apply all of the other stuff at other periods of time when there isn't so much social pressure on you and uh, not as much is required of you from a behavioral point of view. So what I wanted to do, everyone when they get into PH360 is they want to say, well, what's the bit that is most relevant? What is the thing that I'm going to get the most bang for buck out of? And this is exactly what it's designed to do. Health type priorities is essentially, if I was going to put my energy somewhere, um, where should I put my energy to make sure I get the most out of pH 360? Because as we know, every single person is different. Um, and as a result of that difference, different things are actually going to be more profound for, for different people. For example, activators need a lot more movement, uh, whereas diplomats need a lot more time and space. They're just two examples of what we're going to be talking about today. So I want to spend a little bit of time on... Um, just how uh, we start navigating these priorities, how you can make the most of it for the, for the and why you may understand people, uh, how you understand their difference as well, which is a really, really important piece of the game. So what we mean by health type priority is that there is one or two things, areas of the platform that are gonna be more profound and make more change than the other areas of the platform for a given health type. So rather than me trying to go on with lots of explanations, I'm just going to give you some really solid examples right now so that you can start seeing it. So who we're going to start with is the activator. The activator, as you may or may not know, they have a more dominant musculoskeletal system. What this means is that the muscle tissues, their joints, their heart, their kidneys, their adrenal glands, their reproductive organs, these are the organs that are growing with more emphasis and more dominance throughout their whole life. And so we have the activator body, which is juiced up on adrenaline, juiced up on testosterone, and have this physical body that needs to move as much as possible. They're the dominant areas of this activator body. And so if someone's feeling uh, a little bit frustrated or agitated, instead of thinking, oh, it's in their mind, it's just in your head, what we know about the activator is that because they've got such a physical body, their musculoskeletal system is dominant, adrenal system is dominant. We know that in order for them to feel normal, in order for them to feel home, we need to make their body feel normal or home. And the way that we appease that body and make it feel good is by using the tissues that are dominant. That's the musculoskeletal system. So we make this body move. What happens when you make an activator move is that they blow off steam. Activators just need to get rid of energy. When they get a little bit irritated, it needs to come out. Now, it's either going to be, be come out in really blunt language straight to your face, or uh, it may come out in a yell or a scream, or it might come out through movement. And the really fascinating thing here is that if you get a, an activator to move their body, it blows off a lot of the energy that they build up and it calms their mind. It makes them interact socially better. It prepares their body for food in a better way as well. And so just getting the exercise right, it treats so many things that are going on with that body and that mind. So for an activator, if you're a little bit frustrated over the Christmas holidays, if your family's annoying you, if uh, you feel like you've eaten a bit too much or something didn't go your way with the cricket or whatever it might be, um, what you've got to be thinking about is what's the thing that's going to get my body back to balance fastest? It's fitness because that's number one priority for you. And then if I was going to make the most of my fitness and really nourish my body and make sure I, I felt even better, then it's food. Now, this seems pretty obvious. Fitness and foods, of course, are the top two priorities. Well, they are the only, this is the only health type where they are in the top two. Um, there are many, many other things that other people need to consider. But essentially for activators, if you want to get your body in back into gear, back into control, or if you're feeling frustrated, or if you're feeling a little bit irritated, or if you're just not really enjoying the social environment too much, go out and move, eat good food, 
and it's those two things will start settling your body down. It'll make you calmer for your social interactions. It'll calm your brain as well. You don't have to worry about trying to think through things. Just go and move, move that energy out and you'll be feeling good. This is why the priorities are so profound. However, for the diplomat, the diplomats on the other side of the circle, and you can see here that fitness and foods are actually ranked third and fourth. So what's in number one and number two? Well, the number one thing for a diplomat instead of going out and blowing off steam like an activator needs to, because activators build up that energy, they get their adrenaline, they need to blow it off. They need to do it through uh, uh, catharsis. Whereas diplomats, what they need to do is they need to slow down and steady their pace. And the way where you can do that best is in nature or with an, a space at home, clearing out cupboards that are cluttered, making sure your living space is nice and clear with lots of flow to them. These are decluttering and also clearing space, but more importantly, adding natural elements like plants, getting out into nature, anything that involves greenery and open spaces is the number one thing for a diplomat. Now, this might seem very, very weird if you're not a diplomat, but if you are a diplomat, you will know that being in a nice surroundings with lots of greenery or even going for a walk out into the rainforest just at a nice steady pace is incredibly relaxing. There are a number of systems in the diplomat's bodies that just relax and are able to get rid of stress when you, uh, when you get into the right place. It's not about going out and doing a HIIT training session. It's actually about steadying yourself, breathing in really well oxygenated air, having lots of space around you. And those things are going to take that pressure off. It's going to stop things feeling like you're so cramped. It's the cramping, which is the number one stress for a diplomat, whether it be time, whether it be space. And so when it comes to genius, particularly over the, over the holidays or even at work, um, what you need to know from a, a genius point of view is time and space also is required at work. I need to know where I'm going and I want to go there in a steady rhythmical way. And if I've got an itinerary and I know where I'm going roughly, or in fact, if I know exactly where I'm going and I know exactly when I've got to be there, it's going to calm my brain down because now I can just operate and expend my energy in the right way. If I've planned my evening and someone, an activator comes in and they just want to change plans on me because uh, they just met their uh, school friends and they want to now go out for dinner, but I've planned out this perfect dinner and bath after dinner and then watching my favorite TV show. Then I go to bed at a reasonable hour. My activator partners just come in and said, Oh, let's just change the plans. What's going to happen is that that diplomat now is going to go into a cramp stress. Their, their timeline is going to be cramped. And the same thing happens at work. You're working through, you're getting things done. And then uh, you've got a nice schedule that you're working towards. And then your boss comes in and says, hey, we've got to do this. And it's out of the blue and it's going to completely throw your itinerary out. That's going to create cramping in that itinerary. So time and space is very, very important for a diplomat. Being in nice, calm surroundings will steady the mind. Number one priority. Number two is making sure that you're on your own schedule and making sure that you can, uh, you've planned your day. And the real tip is that uh, number one, to, to really relax is don't make any plans for the day and just let the day unfold and have no time schedule whatsoever. That's very pleasing. Second thing that you can do if someone comes in and hits you with a surprise, you just say, hey, give me five to 10 minutes and I'm going to restructure my plan so that I can fit this into my schedule and I can plan for the next day and you know, finish the work that I thought I was gonna get done today but can't because of this emergency, but that's no problem because I've got a plan now and now I've got time and space and I own the schedule again rather than it being on someone else's time frame. And the third is plan for unplanned work. And so put an hour into every single day where you have unexpected work come up. And so someone comes in and says, oh, I've got this thing, it's gonna take 45 minutes. Um, can you fit it in? You go, no problem. I've got an hour buffer in my day. I planned for this already. So time and space, steadiness through nature, having no schedule is number one. Having no schedule in a forest is, is a diplomat's way to go. Uh, after that, uh, having as much natural surroundings or having nice clear working spaces is going to be really important. Number two, having a nice itinerary and having that itinerary built in a way that has flexibility is gonna alleviate a lot of the stress out of a diplomat's body. What happens if these two things don't happen? It creates stress. And for a diplomat, that makes them hold weight. It makes them hold fluid. So it actually influences their fitness and their foods if their body is not de-stressed from having their priorities met. 
So getting in the play section, getting in the Agenia section and following that advice, it's going to be very important for a diplomat. For a crusader, crusaders are very dopamine driven and they're always looking to get as much done as possible. Uh, and they're also very mental. They like to process everything in their mind and, and, and discuss it all in their mind. They may not say a whole lot, but they like to process it all up here and be very strategic. Uh, the problem with crusaders is that they can not ever rest. And as a result, their mind fries itself uh, over the day and they come home and they're a little bit impatient or they just can't, they're not, they have to keep themselves propped up with coffee just to keep the same amount of uh, productivity going. But their mind is constantly searching for productivity. And that's why mind and genius are the top two priorities. So what we know is that if a crusader is working, working, working all day and doesn't break, uh, that'll leave a bit of a hangover the next day or the next week. Um, and so it's very, very important that the crusader rests their mind, uh, but particularly between 6 and 10 p.m. at night and at little intervals throughout the day. It might feel unproductive to do five minutes of deep breathing, but it'll recharge the brain and allow it to keep going. So really dig into your mind section. Start seeing how your brain works, because if you do work the way your brain says, it works going to feel a lot easier. Then when it comes to genius, if you allow, firstly, you've got to have a nice purpose as to why you're working. A crusader without a purpose is a ship without a rudder. It's, it's absolutely essential. In fact, it's a ship without a keel. It'll just fall over. We've got to make sure that a, a crusader has purpose. And it can be annoying sometimes when you're trying to understand crusaders because they always have to be on mission to somewhere or it's something always, there has to be something on the go, something that's being produced. And this is because they need purpose in order to feel normal. So crusaders, the way that you can chill out, the way that you can relax is to make meditation a mission, is to make it purposeful, be the best at it, uh, improve your personal best, um, do it for five minutes or six minutes or seven minutes or whatever it might be, or be more consistent with it. These are the type, you've got to make your mental rest a mission. And then if you do your work in the way that your genius section, you should do your work, a lot of stress is going to come out of your brain because your, your brain is going to be used in the way that it's supposed to be used throughout the day. Now, what's really interesting about this, you can see fitness and foods are quite low. If your mind is very stressed, it actually releases chemicals out into your body that um, will actually make you lose a bit of muscle and put on a bit of fat around your tummy. And so your mind will actually change your body composition. It'll change the effects of your training. It'll change the effects of your nutrition. The mind and the genius of a crusader are very, very powerful and they need to be accounted for by going into those sections. So mental rest, absolutely key for a crusader. Do work the way that your brain is supposed to do it and that is all in your genius section. Understand that your mind is the thing that's going to really drive everything that you're doing and that you're always on a mission. And then at times make, make rest a mission so that your brain can have the downtime that it needs. Um, your place is, is a different situation altogether. Now fitness and foods are going to benefit you but if you don't have purposeful work in the right way with good brain rest, these other things aren't going to have the same dint uh, that, that, that they would if you had those things sorted. So the crusader priority is very much a mental game, very much a purposeful game. When it comes to a guardian, the priorities are social and food and then fitness. Now, what a, a guardian is all about uh, giving. They're very generous. They're, they're very protective and so their hormones make them protective. Their hormones make them want to look after the people they care about or the things that they care about. So if there's some sort of stress, their hormones make them think about others first. And so their metabolism will actually change if their social isn't safe. If you take some money away from a guardian and it threatens the, the housing situation for their family or it threatens the survival or if they disconnect from their family, they don't have close relationships with their family or... Um, their family has been away and they don't contact them or whatever it might be. If there is some sort of social stress, that metabolism is going to shut down because its job, the guardian's job is to protect everyone. And if, it's, if the guardian is experiencing stress, then everyone must be under stress. And if everyone's under stress, they need to protect everyone first. So what they need to do, they need to slow down their metabolism so that they can store more weight so that they can protect everyone because stress equals the famine. Our, our genes haven't evolved too much in the last you know, thousand years. Famine was a real thing. And so these hormones are designed to protect the family in famine. And so if the family is disconnected, if the family is struggling for money, if the family is not feeling safe and supported, 
then this body is going to go into famine protection mode and store weight and crave food. So we've got to make sure that the family is safe first. Number one priority for a guardian is to spend time with loved ones, nice, relaxed time with people that you love and just talk to them and just, and just enjoy their company and feel safe knowing that the people close to you are safe. And then you insert food. Because if, you're, if the body isn't feeling safe, it'll actually go into stress. It'll increase blood sugar levels. It'll make you hold more weight. And so it doesn't matter what food you put into your mouth. Your body's not ready for, uh, for, to do the job that you want it to do. But you get that social thing sorted. Then you get into the foods. You start eating the right foods at the right time, particularly breakfast and lunch being your hero meals. Have two good meals right there. Have a lighter meal at dinner and it will make all of the difference. If you're ha operating over Christmas, Make sure that you um, uh, make sure that you are uh, having your big meal of the day, your Christmas lunch at lunchtime. Try and have lighter dinners. Try and have vegetable only dinners. This is absolute bang for buck. From a food point of view, going to three meals, no more, lots and lots of vegetables, and getting the timing right, absolutely essential. And if you combine that with a really great social environment, you get the foods right anything can happen to the, to the guardian body and they can really change very, very quickly. So the social and foods are all what the guardian's about. Then we have the connector. The connector is a really social, engaged, amazing body. They are incredible at being the social glue for everyone. They keep everyone together. They keep everyone happy. They keep interactions upbeat. They keep them fun. Um, but what's really interesting about that is that they're being driven by oxytocin to always be fun and always keep everyone together and always keep everyone engaged. And what happens if, if there's a threat to that, they go into a slight stress. They're, they're craving oxytocin from all of this connection. Uh, and they're very emotional beings. Their feelings come up and they've got to navigate their feelings of, of I need to connect with these people. I need to make them feel good. This is an incredible service to society that they provide. But if they're having a bad day, but they've got this pressure on themselves to um, be in a good mood, that can conflict. And so what the connectors need to understand, number one, is that in order to feel good in themselves, they've got to understand their mind and they've got to understand, number one, that they have to verbally process. Number two, they're allowed to have bad days. Number three, what they have to do for maintenance of their mind is to make sure they speak their feelings and what's going on for them out to someone trusted. They, they find their best friend and they vent all of their baggage onto that best friend. They get clarity in their mind because you'll get clear the more that you talk about it in your mind. And then when you've got all of that gunk out of your brain, because you've verbalized it all, but you want to do it with someone trusted, who's not going to judge anything that you say, you can say anything you want and you, they know that it's just you venting and getting, getting your mind clear that's then when you're going to be able to bring this incredible amount of energy to your social engagement. You're going to be fun. You're going to be upbeat. You're going to be fully energized and you're going to be clear in your own mind so that you can really support others to be their best selves as well, which is exactly what connectors are amazing at. Now, what's really interesting about this is that if you improve your social aspect and your mind aspect, even having lunch with people and having a laugh will improve your blood sugar levels after the meal. Having a, an interaction that is fun over a meal will actually have a greater effect on the food than just the food itself. Whereas if you have a stressful experience, which connectors can experience that stress if they're sitting by themselves and they feel isolated and they eat exactly the same food, it may worsen their response to that meal. And so what do we need to know for a connector? Well, they need social connection, but they need social connection in a way where they can be themselves and if they're feeling like there's stuff on their mind, then it's important that they vent that stuff out to get clarity in their mind because they have to verbalize it. And then they can come in to an amazing social engagement and really make people feel great. That's going to make them feel better than anything else. And then the food choices and fitness choices become really, really easy. So the connector is very much socially focused, but for a different way than the guardian, as you can see. And so then we have the sensor. Now the sensor is the skinniest body, the least amount of muscle, least amount of fat tissue. And they've got a very, very, very active nervous system. The reason for that is because they're not built for a fight. They're built to think their way out of fighting. They're built to always be ready. And so it, particularly mentally. 
And so what happens to their brain over the day, it's not a matter of being too productive. It's just a matter of there's too many stimulants in the day. There are people talking to them. There's emails coming in, there's social media, there's work to be done. And their nervous system can get very, very, very tired. And so what they need to do is they need to understand putting things on lists makes their brain feel amazing. Working things through logically makes their brain feel amazing. Getting complete mental rest at the end of the day, a nice warm bath, uh, where you can feel completely relaxed, where your brain doesn't have to think about anything, but it can just be still and it can be idle and you're just meditative. Uh, there's no, there's very little music, maybe some soft music. There's very little light, so there's less input from the lights. Anything that can dial down the senses will allow a sensor's mind to completely relax. And when that happens, they'll build muscle. They'll go into growth state. When that happens, their body will unwind, their digestive system will work better. And so just by influencing the mind of a sensor, you influence the rest of their system and it comes through neural rest. Place is very, very important part of this because the place is about loud noises. It's about things being too hot or too cold. A cold sensor will be a very distracted sensor. Um, and so place, it being warm, it being isolated, it being quiet, it being calm, those things will relax the nervous system because there isn't so much input and it's going to allow them to get through their work and really use their mind the way it's designed to work. So focusing on that uh, sensory rest, focusing on place, making sure that the environment that you work in is actually calming, that is going to have a huge influence on how your body processes food, on how your body interacts with its fitness and how, how you want to interact socially as well. So these are things that are absolutely essential. I know it seems a little bit strange to not be talking about food and exercise and the top priorities all of the time, but in fact, you can see that different bodies need different things and their body will mandate these things from you. So you can either go along with it or you can avoid it and you can just get there a little bit slower. Um, so that's a little bit about priorities. I would really encourage you to go through this um, really navigate your own platforms, get in touch with your coaches, making sure that you're really taking advantage of these priorities because this is where you will see the greatest benefit fastest, um, and which is what it's all about when it comes to personalized health is knowing what's exactly right for you in a way that is, uh, is going to be most effective for you as well. So when it comes to Christmas time, um, you know, we've touched on a few of the things that you can work with with Christmas right now. However, this is a little exercise that I'd love you to go through wherever you are in the world. Um, and, and wherever you are in time right now. So the problem with holidays is that everyone tries to navigate the holiday from day one, just going, oh, I probably shouldn't eat this. And, oh, I think I'll be a little bit healthier this time. Oh, I didn't really do it. I didn't really execute on my plan. And this is because we got distracted. Things came up that we didn't expect, whatever it might be. So the best thing that you can do for your Christmas vision is number one, think about when you're, when you're back at work and after Christmas celebrations are done, how do you want to feel about your body? Do you want it to feel a little like, do you want to, are you okay putting on a couple of kilos over Christmas? And if you're okay with that, fantastic. Do you want to maintain your weight or do you want to maintain your fitness or do you want to maintain how good your, your energy levels are, whatever it might be? Do you want to actually improve them? And so the question I pose to you is, which one do you want this Christmas? If you're coming back to work in three weeks or whatever it might be, you might be taking a week off, two weeks, whatever it might be. How do you want to be feeling in your skin after that holiday when you're back at work? Do you want things to be the same as they are now, better than what they are now, or worse than they are now? And can you tolerate it if it's worse? Because you might have a massive trip lined up. It's all drinks, all food, and you just want to really let loose. So putting on a couple of kilos over that time might be completely acceptable to you because you know you can get off. In that case, you want to set a really strong plan and challenge for yourself in the first month to really knock that off and make sure that it doesn't linger on your body. However, it's, if it's the other two, the, um, where you want to either improve or stay neutral, you then have to have a think about what are the things that are going to take you away from that and what are the things that are going to push you towards it. So eating the right food, doing the right exercise, socializing in a way that's right for you, looking at your top priority, they're all going to be things that actually allow you to get to that goal of, I want to be a little bit fitter over, over the Christmas break. What are the things that are going to take you away from that? Well, it might be big social blowouts. It might be the Christmas feast. It might be the leftovers that are happening as a result. It might be that you're on holidays. It might be a number of different things. And so what you want to do as a quick exercise is have a think about from an exercise and fitness point of view, they're two of the things that really fall by the wayside. 
Um, obviously, you've got your top priority that you can work with. But uh, when it comes to um, the fitness and exercise side of things, what what's some bare minimum things that you want to do over the Christmas period? Is it movement every day of some kind for 15 minutes? Is it movement every second day of some kind for 40 minutes? Whatever it might be. But what is a, the thing that you want to achieve in order to get to where you want to get to by the end of the holiday? Second, um, what foods, what meals can you really take control of? Is it, you know, for guardians, is it really controlling dinner and making sure lunch is the heavy meal if you're going to have it? Is that a way that you can like sort of reduce the effects of Christmas and the season on you? Is it, um, is it for a crusader? Is it making sure that you have regular meals? Uh, is it for a, uh, a diplomat that you skip your breakfast and you just have a really, really solid lunch and then you have a lighter dinner? Um, what, what are those things? Is it that you buy all the Christmas food from your list? Is it that you buy and make Christmas food from your food list or pass that on to the people who are supporting you with your cooking? What is it? So have a bit of a think about how can you optimize that time? How can you choose some behaviors? Like I'm just going to take care of dinner five nights a week. I'm just going to take care of exercise four days a week. I'm just, I'm going to make sure I do those things. And then I'm going to allow myself to have four blowout nights. I'm going to let myself just have an absolute crack on those nights. And then the day after I'll be nice and clean again. Um, I'm going to uh, make sure that Christmas lunch, I just don't even worry about it. I'm just going to eat whatever I want. Boxing day, I'm going to do the same thing as well. But then come the 27th, I'm going to have a couple of days where I'm eating a little bit healthier. Should I line some exercise up with my family? Should we actually do more activities rather than just sitting around when we're doing our family thing? What are the ways that you can actually uh, build some goals that get you to the point where you say, I'm actually going to achieve a little bit of an increase in fitness over the holidays, or I'm going to actually have dropped a little bit of weight after Christmas, or I'm going to feel better and have greater energy at the end of my holidays because I'm going to rest really well using my top priority and the right food and exercise. So often Christmas, you know, we, we have a few drinks, we have a bit of food that probably isn't best for our epigenetics. However, you don't have to eat that and do that the whole time. Uh, you can, if you're really clever about it, you can actually have the majority of the food you eat and the days that you experience actually quite good for you. And you don't feel like you miss out on anything. Just those special meals where you really want to have a celebration go nuts and you don't have to think about it. Um, those types of considerations are the one that you want to do over Christmas. So the biggest thing with all of this is if you really want to do this Christmas vision side of things, you need to get an accountability buddy. You need to say to someone, this is where I want to come back to work. This is what I'm going to do to achieve that. Send it into the coaches, let them know what's going on with it. Um, because it's, it's often because we don't ever plan for where we want to be. We just try and navigate it as we go. And then our rubber arm gets twisted and, by the end of it, we're having a, a big three or four days that have really just rocked us and we don't recover from that for the whole holiday. So what's your plan of action? How do you want to be feeling? Who's going to hold you accountable? And how can you start making some plans to really make that happen right now? So uh, it's an, an absolutely fantastic time of year. Um, if you get some time off, it's a great time to evaluate what you want to achieve. It also gives you a bit more time to do the exercise that you want. And if, if family's a barrier for that, get them involved with it. Um, but one of the best things that you can do over Christmas is really rest your body, go into your priorities, go into your food timing, go into your sleep, make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, make sure you're eating the right foods, making sure that you're doing some exercise, making sure you're honoring that top priority. And it's going to allow your body to actually recover because that's what holidays are for so that you can come back more energized, not on the back foot and feeling like you need a holiday from your holiday. So with all of that, um, Thank you very much for, for viewing this and, and having a listen. Uh, I'd love to just answer any of your questions. So make sure you tag me in the Facebook post and we'll make sure that we get um, all of the information out to you or, or what you need to have the best season yet and a really, really fantastic um, uh, journey with PH360. This is, there is nothing that comes close to the experience you're getting right now from a piece of technology and also the support that you're getting with the team. Um, take advantage of this information. It's all there for you. It is your roadmap and your user manual that we all wish we could have had when we were first born. Um, we're, we're lucky to have that user manual right now, so take advantage. It's always there for you when you need it. So uh, use the information as you see fit and look to increase those little bits every single day. Have a great time with it. Get stuck into your priorities and we'll see you uh, at the other end.